Hello, this is Swimurf here, and I am here to tell you about our sponsor, Home for the LD Lee. All of the various Murphaverse shows that you see on this channel are sponsored by Home for the LD Lee. Uh, they're a very good company that sell laser discs. So if you like laser discs, old movies, uh, that kind of thing, uh, especially lots of rare stuff that you cannot get anywhere else, go to Home for the LD Lee. Ah, oh, yes, hello, it's Cousin Furphy here, along with my, my cousin Sussex Murphy, and uh, this is Furphy's Favourites for episode two. Uh, and we're going to do something a little bit special to start the show today. Uh, I'm going to talk about something that I did musically many, many years ago. Uh, Sussex, were you aware that I wrote some songs for Andrew Lloyd Webber? No, no, I can't say as I was aware of that. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I was as I worked as, with him as an assistant in the in the late seventies, early eighties, and I presented a couple of songs, but none of them ever made it into the shows. Um, but for Jesus Christ Superstar, I did do an awful lot of research. You see, I read the entire Bible and various other texts, uh, and I came up with this little ditty that I thought was perfect, but for some reason he didn't think would fit in the show. But I thought it would be perfect for that scene where the uh, Jesus does the whole thing with the fish and the, and the loaves. So, um, yes, here's the song. Always praying for fish For that is all we wish Always praying for fish So yes, uh, he didn't accept that. He, well, he liked it, but he decided that that scene wasn't right for the, for the show. And so, um, yes, it didn't make the final cut, unfortunately. But I would have another chance. Oh, really? Yes, yes, yes. As you can see, his next show, Cats, I don't know if this is actually his next show, it was just a show that he did later, um, he needed some songs for. So I went away and I spent six months living with Cats to try and get, you know, all of the inside goss for the show. And um, yes, um, I came up with this little ditty. Always praying for fish. For that is all we wish, always praying for fish. Murphy, I can't help but notice that there is a slight similarity in those songs. Yes, I suppose they are a little bit similar. In fact, I put the two together later and um, sold it to the Catholic Church. Um, so I gave them, but they thought it was a bit short, so I gave them a second verse. So, um, yes, I gave them this. Always praying for fish. For that is all we wish, always praying for fish, eating crackers and wine. Oh, we are doing fine, eating crackers and wine. Now that went quite well, and and they asked me for another song, uh, and this was at the time of the, the Satanic Panic in the 1980s, and you may remember that they were very much against uh, heavy metal music and Dungeons and Dragons and horror films and all of that sort of thing. But the thing that people forget is that they believed that cauliflower was satanic. I don't remember that. Oh yes, yes, it was a serious thing. Uh, apparently, during the satanic panic, there had been a rise in the sales of, of, of that particular vegetable. And um, yes, they, were, well, they wanted to stamp it out because they believed that it was um, leading to more satanic rituals and that sort of thing. But, so I wrote them another song. It was called Jesus Doesn't Put White Things in His Mouth. Uh, but they didn't like that. So um, that was the end of that relationship there. Um, so yes, that was some of the, uh, that's my story of my work with Andrew Lloyd Webber and the Catholic Church. Really? Yes, it's 100% true. Okay, well, okay, well that's fascinating. So, um, uh, so do you have any of your usual sort of Furfy's favourites, seeing as we are actually doing the Furfy's favourite show, not your um, Furfy's fables or whatever you would call it, if it's just a show about your random activities in the past? Oh yes, yes, um, I forgot, we've got, I've actually tracked down a, an audio clip that we can play for you of Biloxio from their album that I wanted to get on the Banana 100. This was an album called Another Knee to the Groin, and this song is called Thatcher's Britain. Now, Biloxi was somewhat forgotten these days. Uh, they were a good band, very much involved in the whole anti-fascist thing, but they've kind of been forgotten to time. 
uh, I, because they, they just sort of blended in. They didn't really do anything different to anybody else, but I thought they were really good. And that album was, it was very, very important to me in the late 70s, so I thought it was worth bringing up. So, um, yes, that was, um, that was Biloxio. Well, that was uh, fascinating, Furphy. Um, what can you tell us about Biloxio as far as the band? Oh, well, the band were formed in, in London in 1975, and initially they were a bit more sort of your status quo kind of thing, but they decided to, to go punk when Margaret Thatcher was elected, and they realised that, that Britain was in, not in a great state at that particular time. And so, yes, they, they fully embraced the whole punk thing, uh, a little bit before punk became mainstream. And yes, they, they were quite popular around the London scene at the time. And uh, yes, I loved that record. I played it a lot. Uh, unfortunately, I lost my copy in a volcano about 20 years ago. Um, that's what happens when you go skydiving with your record collection. Uh, oddly, that's the only one I lost. Um, yes, the others all survived. but Well, they melted, but that was... Uh, yes, that one fell in. Why were you skydiving with your record collection? Well, it was a, it was sort of an emergency thing. Um, I, we, we, the plane I was in was about to crash, and I didn't want to leave the record collection there in the in the wreckage, so I took it with me. Uh, unfortunately, we did land over a volcano, and so yes, that record fell out of the box and, in, and into the volcano, and the others melted from the heat. So it was probably not the best idea. Um, some of the covers survived, so um, and I do still have the seven inch of My Knife Is Bigger Than Yours by the Scandinavian metal group. Org. How do you spell that? Uh, o r r r r r r r r g. Org. Org. Oh, fair enough. Uh, can we hear a clip of that? Uh, maybe next time. But yes, so Biloxia were formed in London by Kevin Jagger. Uh, that's not his real name. He was just a big Mick Jagger fan, so he took on the name. His real name was Kevin Dickinson, but uh, yes, he was a big Mick Jagger fan, so he took on the name Jagger. And uh, he wrote all of the songs, and this was, was very politically involved in the in the scene at the time. I don't know what he's doing now. Uh, last I heard, he was a bus driver somewhere around Leeds. And speaking of Leeds, I guess that leads us to the end of the episode. So, um, yes, this is Furphy's Favourites. Uh, I am Sussex Murphy, and this is Cousin Furphy here. And, uh, yes, thank you for watching. Thank you.